Why, hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Mr. Dogbelt333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Guys of Redux, as Afghanistan. Last video, we kind of got a quick glance into what the situation was going to be. Uh, it's not exactly the best, admittedly, but, I mean, we, we got some options here. Oh no, I'm just doing the outro for the YouTube. I, I, I think uh, that, that's how that works. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, it's been a while since I've streamed, so some people are confused on how I do the uh, streams. Yeah, um, I record these live on Twitch and then I upload them onto YouTube. That, that's kind of how I do it. Uh, so yeah. All right. Um. So yeah. Um. War is gonna be coming over here. These guys seem a little clueless. Which I'm gonna bank on that we can just push in quickly and then fuck the Indians up or the Dominion up after thirty six. So we don't quite have enough. To rival them troop wise. <laughs> Emmanuel lands in Tehran for another royal visit, and he's immediately put off by how demonstrably hot it is. When he exits its plane, he finds not a grand delegation as he met elsewhere, but a small group of politicians with a small guard. They explain that the government is tied up elsewhere, and as such, they were all who could meet him. He is ferried around the city and enjoys it despite his company. Finally, he's flown into Combs, where he observes a grand military parade, followed by an inspection. Amanua notes the disheveled looks of some soldiers and, is, and their disorganized dis, ah, disorganization, despite the shouts of their commanders. The men are too, all too sloppy, their uniforms are the wrong size, and they conduct their military drills and maneuvers without tempo or panache. During his inspection of what was heralded as an elite division, soldiers sh further down the line drops his rifle and it goes off, shooting himself in the foot. The prince is insulted by such a shoddy reception, but does his best to contain his dissatisfaction. When he returns to the plane, he's all too happy to be out to run. They think they can run their, the Middle East better than the Turks. Well, you know, who knows? Oh, the Regal Winter Olympics. Total Charter. When Emmanuel returned to Kabul, he returns a changed man. He looks out on the capital he left, no longer content with its visits. He saw the magnificence of Istanbul and the squalor of Tehran, and is ashamed to see Kabul looking like the latter rather than the former. He's also all too aware of the state of his military before the war and... His visit to the Ottomans has given him some ideas as to how to improve the situation. While Amanullah is not first in line to receive the throne, should his father abdicate or be rendered incapable, he's a man of ambition. His uncle Nasrullah is a reactionary man who would rather see Afghanistan wallow in the same trouble that has been affecting it for centuries instead of dragging it into the future. A foolish agenda. Amanullah Khan, one way or another, will have his throne. He will force Afghanistan, one way or another, into the modern world. I found Kabul a city mud. I shall leave it a city gold. Will you? I don't know so much about that, buddy. 98th. He's been crowned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, here we go. I'm going to save here right as we start. Because uh, we need to win this war uh, to do the path that I want to do. And the remnants of the Raj are self dissidents. Dissent has sprung up like wildflowers and weight of Edward VIII's succession. In Kabul, we have our own troubles, keeping the latest discontent of reform down. A repeat of Victoria's third Anglo-Afghan war might cement our position whilst winning new lands and subjects for the crown. The time is ripe. Let us repeat... Our victories. Beautiful. So we'll pin you guys down and we'll start a general push into the south. Um, these 
These guys were exercising. I don't know if you still are. Looks like we got extra troops, which is going to be very nice. Because we might need them. Um, no, it's going to be the one over here, right? There we go. Fourth Anglo-Afghan War. The war against our Indian rivals has kicked off once more. Therefore, we must put in all effort to ensure total victory. For if we are to succumb, our rule will surely be in grave danger. Let's do some general pushes right now. Ah, oh, shit, that bad event. I should have actually... I'm so used to clicking past that event, I forgot that we could actually, uh... Uh, use is actually relevant to us. Am I gonna go back, load the autosave to do it? I am. Gosh darn it, I am. I only did a couple battle on battle anyway. Am I regretting doing this a little bit? Well, it's loading quickly actually, relatively quickly. Hoping it'll just. There we go. Time is right. Let's get our victories. Get these guys back in. Uh, we'll just start... I'm pushing to Kashmir. Take some of these mountains while we can... A better defendable position. And we'll just have the rest of you just generally attack. After the Valkyrie, as the British Raj collapsed into turmoil and warfare, the neighboring kingdom of Afghanistan took advantage of this as an opportunity to seize Peshawar and Quetta, both border regions of the Dominion. How the Afghan government's attempt to modernize over the last decades have been met with fierce resistance from the conservative elements within the country. King Amunullah Khan now hopes to use the turmoil in Delhi following the death of George V. To his advantage, by repeating the success of the Third Anglo-Afghan War, the king hopes to silence the conservative opposition and bring new lands to the crown. However, international experts do not put many hopes on the tiny mountain nation winning this conflict. Who cares about Afghanistan? Well, I care about Afghanistan. I will let you know. So get that got going. Next up, we got... Let's request allied support. The Germans and Ottomans have always claimed to be friends with us against the imperialists, so we must request that they hold true to that promise. As of right now, we are prepared to equip every soldier with a rifle, and we desperately need material support in order to continue the fight after the element of surprise has worn off. Well, while we still have the element of surprise... Oh, Black Monday. That's not good. It's not surprising, but it's also not good. Could move to encircle these guys. For decades, the situation of Shia minority in Afghanistan has been bad. The post-war situation wasn't gold, and another war could possibly make it worse. Shia moms in the province of Herat and Fatah, Farah, not Fatah, excuse me, have encouraged the Shia minority to flee into their friendly neighbor Persia. Let's hope the Persians send them back. We need that manpower. Traitors. Torque lock in France. Um, I mean, we can have you move into there. We'll move you down here. And, yep, this is where the stagnation has begun. Almost declared Republic. Alright, um... raise the banners. War is upon us once again. Afghanistan must be coming unified for this war, or else we all suffer, regardless of distance from Kabul. Regardless of faction and tribe, all Afghani people must give blood, the emir blood and toil. Our very survival depends on it. Are we at war for the entire... No, only Delhi right now. That's good. They haven't called anyone else in. Persians made the right choice and sent our people back home. Hurrah. That's good. Sarafs are a group of Indian merchants who travel between Afghanistan and Delhi, exchanging money and goods in both of them. Our economy hardly depends on their visits. 
Now the war is coming, borders are safe no more. Only a few of these straps are brave enough to continue trading with us. With well, most of our caravans are gone, we must now suffer from economic crisis. We don't need those Indian dogs anyway. Oh, thank you, Turkey. Oh. As our troops pour over the crates of rifles and massive artillery, they are awed by their craftsmanship. Turks promise us weapons, and they have been delivered in spades. We have begun to immediately disperse them to our soldiers on the front, and with these weapons straight from the Caliph, Allah will surely look upon us favorably. Allahu Akbar. Oh, look at that. Rifles by the crate, ammo by the box, and artillery by the pallet all arrive in Kabul airport aboard German planes. The almost state-of-the-art weapons of war are a far cry from what we were using previously, and as such, our men will require a lot of retraining to properly use them. Despite this, we now can fight on more equal terms with our enemy and have a greater chance of victory. Maybe one day we can repay them. Maybe. If we can get this encirclement off, it's not an astounding one by any means, but... It would be very nice. Like, we've secured Baluchistan already. Try to pin these guys down. Let's rally the nationalists. Nationalists and radicalists may be upset with our regime for not following their doctrine, however, they hate the foreign imperialists more. War unifies, and our enemies and us now share an enemy. Every son and daughter of Afghanistan must give all to defeat the imperialist. Right, we can... oh, we're going to push in here a little bit. These guys aren't the best equipped either, so we're doing okay. If we can just uh, crush this guy. Oh, that guy's, that guy's been wounded. That's annoying. <sighs> Let's get a Luftwaffe expedition. We need air force. We need air. Our friends in Germany are eyeing our work extensively as top brass in their institutes of war study our engagement to better improve their doctrines. We shall request an increased correspondence as well as support from Luft expedition. With these men and their air wings at our back, we will fare much better against the Antod's technological advantage. Do we even have an air force? We have no airplanes. We 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 don't. Yeah, shit. Um. Okay, shit. Um. Well, that's not nice. God, I wish I didn't just immediately. Okay, you move into Keta. You guys stop the push immediately. Um, okay, we got planes. That is actually huge. Um, it's not much. But hopefully it'll be enough to get something going. Uh, let's get an endorsement by the Caliph. We'll ask the Caliph in Constantinople to sponsor a jihad to conquer Delhi from the imperialists. True Muslims around the world will answer the call to arms against the infidels and lend us support in both steel and blood. Oh, German volunteers. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Daddy Wilhelm. The Germans have sent help. The so-called Luft expedition has arrived in Kabul to seemingly an equal amount of cheers and jeers. The roar of a regiment of the finest planes in the world is such a beautiful sound. These German air wings and volunteers have been drilled in desert warfare. During a stopover in Aleppo, and as such, are not totally out of her element. However, there was a mishap as a German bomber bounced off of the makeshift airbase in Kabul before crashing to the ground. The plane's landing gear was ripped off by the bumpy and uneven surface before the nose was sent catering to the earth. In each case, German advisors are already discussing with our military brass on how to best utilize the expedition. While a group centered around the remnants of a newly revitalized NHE have welcomed their 
these patsy white pasty white men with open arms, traditional elements within our nation, still guard of suspicion. Abibullah has built the reputation of being the lapdog of Han, and the new development within our emirate seems to confirm such a tale. It means to be seen whether the German elements within our nation will lead to victory or disgrace. Uh, Willkommen, Pfaffenbuba. <coughs> This is actually great. Um, we very much needed this. We very much need to k crush this pocket. Okay, shit. Um, this is not gonna work. We need you to retreat, Mr. Cavalry. And reinforce there. Um, let's kick in the door. The Delhi regime is weak internally, with the only Imperial's garrison holding the rotten structure up. We have been holding partisans of the provisional government for years. Now it's time for, to, for them to prove their usefulness, sending some collaborators with the provisional government, and we'll destabilize them from the inside. Here we go. Let's send in the hounds. Okay, jihad, jihad. Fuck! They're trapped in there. In an address from Constantinople, the Caliph has declared that a war against the Raj as a jihad to free the shackled faithful underneath the British imperialism. Two jubilant Ottoman crowds, the Sultan Abdul Mesed II unreached a tirade against a centuries-long British yoke under the Indian continent, and has demanded that self-determination be granted to the Indian population. This has been a immediately boon to our efforts, as pious Muslims from across the re region, and in fact the world, have begun to arrive in Kabul to join our struggle. Our Airports and travel stops are overrun by pilgrims and warriors who seek Allah's glory by supporting our struggle. However, counter-movement led by the Emir of Mecca have decried this as a purely political maneuver by the Sultan to gain influence in the region. The Amman rival in Cairo have condemned the Caliph's actions. Political play or not, the results are undeniable. As warriors from the Islamic world come to our aid. Blessed be. Okay, shit. Um, oh, the Ottomans are sending us volunteers now. That is huge. Um, okay, if we can only crash, uh, crush this, or at least like dislodge this unit so we can get this guy out, because he's actually holding the line pretty well, but. There's only so much he can do. I will placate tribal leaders as well. More than just one tribal er elders angry at our regime. Many tribes either refuse to lend their support to Emir or are reluctant in their efforts. We need their support in order to have a fighting chance, so we will fill their ears with promises of wealth and prosperity should our combined efforts succeed. Oh, I've got one more focus to read. Not all Indians accept the rule of Viraj. Within our nation resides the provisional government of India, a native resistance group dedicated to finishing the destruction of Viraj. We have given them refuge in our nation long ago, however, they have long wasted it away in exile, never finding an opportunity to strike at the Raj nor return home. Now, with war having broken out, we finally have a reason to use them. They shall be smuggled into their homeland to commit acts of sabotage and riotous sedition to divide our enemies' attention. The Raj, for all their faults, are much bigger than us, and with their undivided attention, we will surely fail. With them feeling the heat of a new fire in the rear, however, we'll surely gain our righteous victory. Who knows, maybe they'll even gain power in the ruins of the Raj. United against imperialism. I was hoping we might get like, some units to pop up in the back lines. Oh, oh, the Germans are here. Oh, look at that. That is Wunderbar. Is uh sehr gut? Ah oh, shit. Das ist nicht gut. Das ist schlecht. Und the time, the Zeit, die Zeit, is over now. Um, um, okay. Um, we can do partial mobilization. So let's just jump up to that right off the bat. I doubt that'll give us much more... Yeah, we don't really have much industry anyway. But once we start getting an industry base, that'll be nice for us. 
Um, yeah, we're admittedly not off to the best start, but will we manage to pull through? Hopefully. Um, but we'll have to wait and find out next time, because I got into there for all YouTube people. So thanks for always watching. Like, like, dislike, didn't leave me comments. Feedback down in the comments below. Uh, check out my various links down in the description box below. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.